country. I had coached many players who went on to become national and state champions. Few more reaching that stage would make me happy and give me huge satisfaction. Thanks to Saina Nehwal and PV Sindhu, and to some extent the likes of Kidambi, Srikant, Kashyap, etc. Every time any of those names won a title abroad, which was becoming a habit, 50,000 more kids would join the coaching scene in the country. So this will give you a brief about how the book begins. It begins that dreadful day that he's talking about. We'll get to what it was about, but it begins with this. All these thoughts running in his head about uh, uh, the future of these wonderful people that he had been training. So Mr. Sanjay, um, talking about you know, the books. And now that I just read out a beautiful excerpt out of it, I, you know, you mentioned that the excitement of knowing that they're going to be such a large audience was amazing. So what were your thoughts that day? And uh, was it just the audience that you were excited about? Or was it the player's potential that the audience had to, you know, they got to? Obviously, I had not seen the players or the kids uh, before because I had just gone for an initial meeting. And for me, you know, uh, Bombay or Mumbai has a very really unique problem. You don't get, uh, you know, large uh, academies or large number of courts where you can coach because you're all club based. Unlike Hyderabad or Bangalore, where Gopi and Prakash are coaching you, they've got miles and miles of courts over there, you know. So we are handicapping away. So I was just happy that this will happen. And uh, I, I went there with an open mind, had a good discussion, and I came back in the evening. And I will just tell you what, what actually happened about 15, 20 days before that. I used to get uh, back pain, you know. So I was wondering you know, what it was, but I didn't pay any attention to it. Like a typical sportsman, we have our own uh, injuries day in and day out, so we don't, uh, we neglect, uh, you know, what is obvious. And uh, so the, I ignored the back pain. But when I came home, my leg, my right leg was, you know, in a funny shape. I was not able to walk properly. And uh, uh, in the night, when I wanted to go to the loo, I was, you know, I, my wife helped me to, to the door of the bathroom and I slumped. As if I had lost both my legs, you know, I just fell like a thud right on the, onto the ground. And uh, that's how this uh, uh, nightmare started. So, um, I mean, looking at the fact that you had to suddenly face something out of the blue, uh, I'm sure, you know, you and your family members must have been surprised about uh, the fact that one moment you're absolutely okay and the second you're not able to move an inch and you're not able to help yourself uh, to the bathroom. So what happened after that? Did you, uh, were you immediately able to recognize that there was something wrong? Did you rush to the hospital or did you wait and see what happened? What happened after that? Well, this, this actually happened uh, late in the night, you know, around 1, 1 uh, a.m. So at that time we decided to, where to go, how to go. So we thought we'd go in the morning, you know, around 7.38. Morning again, I got up around 6 and to go to the loo, same problem happened. And I came to my bed this time and I slumped over the right on the ground. So there was panic in the house. Uh, we, and before that, I must tell you that I was uh, diagnosed as suffering with Parkinson. And uh, symptoms were there, but I, they were all under control because I was fit. And uh, so my wife, uh, got very upset and you know my kids were at home my son-in-law was there and they rushed me to ambani hospital and uh, the nightmare started all over again you know we thought that maybe there is some some temporary thing must be there and i'll be back to normal but that was the last that i was normal and uh, we when we reached the hospital the doctors came rushing and uh, there was a chaos over there they thought i had a brain stroke or, or somebody said something else but finally, with the CT scan and with MRI and this and that, they came to a conclusion that this was cavernoma. Cavernoma, you know, nothing to do with fitness of a person. It can hit anybody anytime. And uh, it, it is there in your uh, system. It will not hit you at all. Normal cavernoma is about one in three, four hundred people get that. When the rogue blood vessels combine together and stop blood flow going down your spine or to your brain, and they are normally outside the spinal cord. So it is easy for a surgeon to just go inside and pluck it and just and be done with it. In my case, it was the rarest of rarest cavernoma because it was developing inside the spinal cord where he, the surgeons are reluctant to 
touch much because you know all the veins and all the the blood is passing through that and if they hit a wrong vein you know you may go for a right eye operation and you lose your left leg so nothing much is known about it so it took them 6 7 days 8 days 9 days to decide how to go about it but that is where it was so kevin noma is very dicey situation for me and a very dicey operation but the doctor told my wife that 75 70 to 75% chance it will be successful but 25 to 30% i may go wrong and we don't know what will happen after that so that that's how it was and the family then had to cope with uh, whatever uh, was there initially in the initial chapters you also mention about your childhood and how you were this bubbly energetic kid always packed with a lot of energy and uh, your parents wanted to figure out a way to sort of channelize that into something and sports was one way to uh, channelize all that energy at that time if we go back those years cricket was like the sport that everybody used to look at the most popular sport uh, the entire country used to watch so how did you uh, sort of not go into the field of cricket and how did you choose badminton uh, to begin with uh, as your sports career you know uh, uh, i was staying in alabad during my childhood and uh, my father was a very senior uh, government officer a very good student of his time but when he got married to my mother her brothers the elder one played ranji trophy for uh, for up and was almost uh, selected for indian team and the younger one also uh, played a good level of cricket but both of them failed uh, two three times to before they could finish their bachelor of arts so my father said you will not play cricket because you will go and become like your mamas and so <laughs> everybody waited and he tried to push me here and there so, uh, so i joined the alabad gym khana to play tennis then he got transferred to nagpur there was no tennis so i was left in a limbo and uh, just wasting my time you know in nagpur and uh, as they say that you know things happen which are under your control and not under your control but as uh, uh, there was a club that came up right opposite my house and that is how i uh, there was a badminton court over there so naturally i i veer towards badminton living around my my dunda clan that used to follow me and uh, i sort of ventured into the game and as they say that it was like you know duck taking to water i just relish that game and uh, you know my fitness came from that game my thinking uh, as a sportsman started with, with that game and the first tournament i won when i which i won and my photograph came in the local hifaz paper in nagpur was the inter school championship and from there this journey started the love affair with badminton started and love affair with sports started which i feel is very very important for any child sports gives you so many things and they should always look forward to be on their feet rather than glued to their uh, you know uh, computers and uh, tv sets moved to london at some point of time right in in your life did you notice a difference between um, the badminton played in london the people there and a not- difference in the indian way of playing badminton the players and the mindset yeah, during my time as a junior and as a, as a senior player early part of my career it was hard enough to play tournaments they would not give you any facilities and you were basically left to be on your own and uh, there was no coaching there was nothing you just you just uh, observed and learned london or england was a totally different atmosphere over there everything was structured regimented tournaments announced were held uh, you could play the inter county they never asked you any questions for how long you are here which country you come from they were all for sport and all for badminton so the one thing that i learned over there is that you have to fend for yourself first of all you have to book a court over uh, in the club you get somebody to play with you and uh, you you can hire a coach and uh, you have to be you become absolutely independent the fascination also was to become very fit so that's when i learned weight training that's when i learned you know typical uh, badminton specific exercises like shuttle runs shadow badminton which have stood with me for a long long time but the most important thing i learned over there was they have these weekend tournaments we started on friday evening around 4:35 and they go on till sunday morning and you could be playing around 25 30 games hardly any time even to change your t-shirt but that made me rock solid 
that gave me a lot of stamina and a lot of strength which lasted for a long long time in my career there is a mention in the book match point as well uh, about uh, you wrote an article uh, right in the midday paper and um, the bai did not receive that well um, however you did have the complete right to um, write from your end and you had the right to speech um the right to share your perspective and you did that so what made you take that step to first of all write that article um what made you believe that this is going to sort of bring change and how how did the bai respond to it how did very funny which is also part of my book when i was in england i qualified for the all england championship in 1975 all england as you know is the holy grail of uh, world badminton and instead of congratulating me because my name appeared in the uh, in the magazine under the uh, under the head, uh, headline of players from india i happen to be an indian my color is indian my caste is indian and uh, they sent me a letter all the way from uh, jabalpur saying that you know how dare you play for india when not selected officially oh my god <laughs> and also questions will be asked in the parliament as if our world is over in parliament parliament and nothing else to do except watch who is playing where and so i felt very funny <laughs> at the same time my two friends from my hostel from new zealand they also qualified they get a congratulatory telegram from their association from the national body so that was a difference but then i forgot all about it and i came back to india i had you know a fascination for writing so i somehow wiggled my way into sports week at that time which was a big magazine and i started writing and when you are writing something it is you, you have to be very clear and very transparent in your thoughts and in your writing so invariably i had to write something about how the game was being administered what was lacking what should be done no personal uh, uh, hatred or personal uh, this thing uh, ever aimed at anybody but just that this is what i felt and this is what i wrote <clears throat> but the badminton association of india they never wanted anybody to talk about them they never wanted them to be criticized and they never wanted to give you that freedom and coming back from uh, from england you know i was i was so much my thinking had changed i had become so uh, independent so i used to wonder you know why they should be upset about this they wanted to ban me they tried three four, three four times so i had no the choice but to go to the to go, go to the justice courts to seek justice and all three times they were made to look like uh, idiots and uh, the judges agreed with me that it is my freedom of speech you don't like it you lump it and if you really don't like it you can file a defamation case against me but they would never do that they would just browbeat you they would just uh, tell you that we will ban you for life and ban you for this and that so i was very clear in my thinking that i will not stop writing because this is the right i have got from my constitution and uh, this is what i want the the youngsters who take up the game that if you know the rules of the game if you want to play the game properly you play it don't get afraid of uh, these officials they are real cowards if you show them your strength they keep quiet but they can they can keep on troubling you so you have to be strong you have to just be strong and have to face them and tell them ki boss i am going to do do this you do whatever you want there is not nothing much they can do and this is what happened in my in my in my case except harassment was there i missed a couple of international tournaments but in the end i think i i was vindicated mm-hmm. i was able to play almost uh, 15 16 years i played for india from 1975 to 1990 mm-hmm. and i had some great moments of my life because of uh, the game uh your your journey and the battle with the uh, bi is truly inspirational for any sports person or anybody looking for um this kind of a headstrong nature because at the end of the day you must stand up for what you believe in and that's exactly what you did uh throughout your career in badminton be it with the battle with the fight against them or be it through your disease as well we see that you were so headstrong you were so st- stubborn that you were able to fight off the disease itself so tell us a little more about 
uh, Parkinson's and cavernoma since, I mean, such a dreadful disease and um, not being able to move an inch, absolutely, completely being disabled, not being able to do anything at immediately must have been so stressful for you mentally, physically, emotionally as well. So do you think that maybe being a sportsman sort of helped you? Do you think somehow they're interconnected with each other? What do you think about sports and the way that you you're know, deceased? Uh, when I gained consciousness after my uh, spinal uh, surgery, and when they took me from recovery room to the ICU, for about seven days, I did not know what was happening. I was in and out of uh, stupor. And uh, because I was so heavily drugged and uh, with steroids and all these things. After seven or eight day, when the doctor came and I told him I, I cannot feel free my legs. She said, yes, that will be an effect and this and that. I could not wiggle one toe also of my uh, leg. That was the scene. And uh, for some time, I was in, uh, I was wallowing in self pity. What will happen to me? What will happen to my, to my family? And things like that. And uh, it took, the physiotherapy started a little bit, but I was in the hospital for 42 days. When I came home, it was nice to be home, but of course I was on wheelchair. But I realized one thing, that I cannot give up this fight against uh, cavernoma. Parkinson, I had controlled because of these so many uh, being fit, you know, you can control Parkinson. Different exercises, you can control Parkinson. But Kavanova was something totally different. So we started uh, doing our physio. The physios came home. The physios came online. Unfortunately, that was the time also of the lockdown. You know, the first lockdown that happened. So I missed about five, six months of exercises. I could not strengthen my, my body. But then slowly it started. And I knew this is the only way out. Because I was in sports, I was used to hard work. Because I was in sports, I could take pain. And because I, I was in sports, I could actually do a lot of things. And slowly we built up my leg muscles. So my right leg was working only 15%. Left leg was absolute zero. So it took about seven, eight months to get going. Then I started working on a walker. And I was determined that I will, I will have to be on my, on my feet. The walker... I was able to do about 30 to 40 minutes at a stretch. So I was quite pleased with what was happening. I could climb stairs. And in fact, as you go through the book, there is a challenge from my physio to me, whether I can climb six stories of my house, of my building, uh, with no bars, just with my hands, you know, putting on the wall here and there and then pushing myself up. So we did that. And it was all going well. And suddenly one day I fell in the bathroom. This is about two, two, three months back. And uh, I you know, fell with a thump. I think the floor must have been slippery or something. And I fractured my left, left hip. Mm. And uh, so again, I had to go through a major surgery. The uh, hip, left hip was, uh, implanted, uh, was implanted. And again, I was in hospital for around 18, 20 days. And, uh, but again, I, I, I had already realized that I can fight back. So I fought back again. And uh, I, for about 15, 20 days, I could not walk. I was bedridden. And again, I've started now walking with the walker. So I'm doing around 10, 15 paces. And the main thing is, all this has happened to me, gives me courage because of my sports background. That has made me very strong and resilient. I must add one thing that the family plays a very great role. If there is no support from the family, you get lost. In my case, I had a tremendous support from my from my family. My elder, elder daughter is here with me. Maybe, in the, maybe she can throw a little more light about uh, what was actually happening Hi. in our family. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today and being such a wonderful support to Mr. Sanjay Sharma. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, as dad was telling you, it wasn't really an easy time for us. Um, I think it came as a shock to him and it was obviously, um, I would say probably an even bigger shock for my sister and me because uh, we'd always seen our dad as, you know, the strong figure in our lives. Um, uh, when I used to play tennis, he used to pick me up from school. So we've spent many, many times like bonding together uh, out on the road and all of that. 
and then to see him um, basically not <laughs> being able to um, even move his legs and even like so as he told you like only the left toe would move that's the only thing that he could wiggle and uh, everybody had given up hope i remember the doctor coming and telling us coming and telling my mom actually that uh, i don't know what you are on but i don't think he's going to walk again and today he's defied everybody he's defied all logic and it was it's amazing obviously we had to push him sometimes but um, <laughs> i think a huge credit <laughs> huge round of applause like these yeah. fights and we've had like he resorted to <laughs> he resorted to like crazy excuses sometimes <laughs> a petrice became became like help you yeah. help us <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um obviously like we grew up overnight my sister and i and i think one of the biggest credits uh, for his recovery largely i'll give to my mom because like she didn't give up you know he gave up we gave up everybody gave up but she didn't give up so she um, never she never gives up yeah <laughs> Uh, that is so sweet uh, isn't it wonderful to have somebody like that uh, as a part of your she life she is absolute rock pillar <laughs> pillar of my life <laughs> that is love as a sports person or as a successful sports person you definitely end up making a lot of haters but you also carry the journey with you and you end up making a lot of friends you end up making a lot of long life relationships that you're going to remember <laughs> and we see that in the book so <laughs> who would you say were were your biggest supporters throughout your journey and uh, what about your mentors your guides uh, would you like to share a, a little uh, note for them it's a lifelong uh, friendship and acquaintance you make when you're playing the game for a long long time shrish natkarni just uh, uh, told you before when we started that he's known me for 50 almost 50 years so there are friends from the game from from that long you can imagine how much time we must have spent together in fact i spent more time in the game and with my friends and with my family because i was 6 7 months of a year i was out it's not <laughs> easy life but yeah, it's a it's... satisfying life mm-hmm. and uh, so i uh, i call people like prakash padukon or gopi chand or shirish and there's so many others there are dc and all these people close friends of mine and uh, we will always be together uh, in thick and uh, thin uh mentor i would say that uh, as a player because i was playing at the same time as uh, prakash padukone he, he was our captain for a long long time so we looked upon to him because he was world number one and he was some something that we tried to emulate we could not do it but we tried so i mean there is a whole gamut of players and uh, officials who are good 60 70 80 players who i can call as my uh, friends if not close but some are close and some are not so close only thing was that uh, being an individual sport you cannot uh, you know you cannot have very long lasting friends unless if you are living in the same city it becomes a problem so uh, i i have had I, i was very lucky that i got in uh, playing at the right time and my career lasted so long also because of help i received from players from my fellow players who may want to defeat me but after the game is over your buddy is all over again so that is the way it goes and uh, prakash is definitely somebody i looked up to there were people like dinesh khanna there were people like uh, nandu nadekar of course was much beyond my time but sayed modi you know late sayed modi got assassinated uh, in 1988 great fellow some somebody i looked up to because he was commonwealth champion 1982 there are so many of them and i learned from everybody you know so you learn the personal traits you learn how to be uh, honest on court you learn so many things and that honesty then also transforms itself into your other life you learn that uh, failure in sports is of yesterday in sports is always today and tomorrow so you forget about yesterday learn from it and move on so there are so many lessons of life we learn from uh, from uh, games beautiful beautiful there i just have two comments here in the comment box which i'd like to share with you uh, rohan says if will power had an identity <laughs> that is definitely true you are uh, you seem like the identity of of, of will power and yeah. we get to know as we read the book that uh, if if there was a way to define will power i would definitely define it by you because you're such an inspiration to everybody and so does komal also agree to that she says sir you're a massive inspiration to all of us so we definitely agree with that he sure is 
and uh, his thoughts, the book, uh, the way he has brought out his journey, all of that is definitely inspirational to us. So um, talking about, uh, you know, let, let's go back a little bit to your childhood and, uh, you know, talk about that energetic kid that you were and all that energy that you, uh, you know, you mentioned a couple of funny incidents as well in the, in the book where you try your hand at dry, riding an auto and uh, you also uh, sort of spend some time on the, on, with the Gunda clan that you mentioned uh, on the streets. Uh, trying to uh, take a shot at the street bulls. So would you like to share that uh, incident with the audience for us today? You know, we had so much time. I used to come back from school around 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And it's, it's very hot in Nagpur, probably the hottest city of India. So we would rest for about an hour. I was not allowed to leave the house. And then 5 to 7 or 7.30 was gala time with my these friends because I was not into sports at that time. Uh, in my bungalow, there were little outhouses. And my rickshaw wala used to take me to school, he used to live over there. So one day I told him that you get, get over this, you sit behind, I want to drive. So he tried to reason out, Baba, I said, 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 and my shirt got torn and there was bleeding and this and that. Oh and uh, so I was in for a big, big, uh, you know, slapping fury from my dad when he came back home. <laughs> the, rickshaw, the front wheel got, uh, you know, twisted. So there was a lot of damage. And it was a lesson learned. But uh, you can't keep a ch child away from being shaitan. Right. You know, especially with nothing else to do. Uh, so one day we decided that all the street lights of civil lines where I used to live, we have to aim and see who gets the highest, who can break the uh, the bulbs. <laughs> and so for about an hour, we went around, you know, just taking aim at the, the catapult or a kitty and hitting those uh, bulbs. And we broke some 30, 40 lights. Oh my God. <laughs> so for so definitely two, a very energetic kid. Two lights, two lights energetic. of Nagpur was in, uh, in darkness. And of course, slowly the truth came out that I was one of the gang leaders. And I had won that uh, title over there because I scored the highest six. And, uh, but when my dad came to know, I got a hiding of my life. And uh, I got used to hiding so that it did not affect me much. But that is the way we were. Uh, but you know, cycling in the sun, running here and there, climbing up trees, all these things have to make me into a fit uh, player. Gully danda, kho kho, kabaddi, anything that we wanted, we would play. And people don't realize that these physical, uh, you know, movements and running and this and that gives you a lot of energy and also makes you very strong. So when I landed in Mumbai after Nagpur, I found myself playing the juniors and I, and I was very fit. I used to win all the tournaments. At the age of 16, myself and my partner, Vispi Kapadia, defeated the then men's reigning national doubles champions. We were just about 16 years old. And it had all to do with my fitness. So I, that's why I feel, you know, sad nowadays when I see the urban kids glued to their, uh, you know, mobile phones, not doing anything physical, wearing glasses at the age of five and six. This is, this is not good. They have to be out on the, on the road and they have to be out on the ground and run. So that is the way it should be. Today, we have a lot of thinking to do, a lot of takeaways from the session that we had. I have hundreds of more questions. If you leave me here with Mr. Sanjay, I could talk to him, uh, you know, the entire night about the book because it's such a lovely book. It is such a, a, a beautiful masterpiece with so many details that, you know, we all have questions about. So do you have a message for the parents? Uh, because nowadays, even if the kids want to go out, sometimes the parents are skeptical to send them out today, especially considering the very uh, sad world that we live in today. So do you have a message for the parents or the kids? Uh, if you were to sort of give them a message regarding uh, encouraging their children in the field of sports, what would it be? Well, I would say that uh, put them in some sports and you're going to become physically and mentally strong. But at the same time, if you want your child to be a tournament player of any, any sport, first of all, you've got to think yourself whether you've got time. To give to your kid. 
or whether your kitty parties or whether your office engagements or whether your holidays are more important if your child is going to come into sports at any level then all your time is going to be his time you have to take him or her around you got to make sure they are getting good coaching you got to make sure that uh, he's playing tournaments so your your life is topsy turvy if you cannot handle it don't put your child in the, in the sports don't put him in coaching it is not easy it is not cheap it's going to cost you a lot and only if you are sure you do it 90% parents just put the child children for a lark that for a time vyatit kar lega so we will be free for this and that don't uh, think like that so my message to the parents is be very clear in what you are thinking be very clear in what you want and then only put your child into any sports so we move to the audience questions uh, mr manoj was and uh, mr shrish nath uh, nathkarni are here they know uh, mr sanjay for quite a long time so um, mr nathkarni let's begin with you would you like to uh, share something an incident or any any memory that you have uh, from with mr sanjay sanjay is one of the greatest fighters that i have known a fighter in a good sense in the in the field of sport uh, not one who lagaus dishum dishum but uh, one who just does not know when to give up he is uh, he plays the game in such a competitive way or has been playing the game in such a competitive way that his opponent can never be certain of winning even if he is leading by a big margin sanjay will never give up he just keep fighting we played each other in the intercollegiate he mentioned uh, about playing with vispi kapadia as partner and beating the nationally ranked combinations um we played against each other in intercollegiate uh, competition and in the uh, in the team events if sanjay you remember right uh we met each other in the individual event and we met each other in the team event and in one of the two you beat me and in one of the two i beat you <laughs> and it was 18 15 the final game score in both the matches how's that for a coincidence can you remember this yeah sanjay yes and, and then we had a we had a we had a, a final where elphinstone college uh, represented by uh, sanjay sharma and tej sapru met st xavier's college which was represented by me and uh, amit bhagat and we had a wonderful match it was played in an absolutely first class spirit and uh, of course sanjay then went on he was very young i was much older than him i was in my final year when he was in his first year so at that stage age does make a big difference but he went on to become the state champion he went on to play for india for so many years and i have always looked up to him as a guy who just doesn't know when to give up i have always admired his fitness which is something i could never achieve his levels of fitness was something amazing absolutely amazing i remember once um, Uh, i'm taking a couple of minutes of your time but please uh, this is uh, no, no, important no, please we had got we, we had gone to hong kong where uh, prakash padukone had been the manager of the indian thomas cup team and sanjay was also there i remember playing on the roof of the hong kong cricket club playing tennis <laughs> against prakash padukone who thrashed the hell out of me oh and then sanjay sharma came up and he also wanted to play but more than what he played what i admired him for was that he took some 25 30 rounds of that entire area on the roof where there were two tennis courts and then he says ah 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 maza aaya that just showed <laughs> how much he enjoyed you know physical uh, uh, training to keep fit i hated it i've always hated it but uh, he's one guy i know who's always enjoyed uh being physically very very fit at the top of fitness there is one more point that i must add this is about the fight that sanjay had with the bai uh yes, he is one guy who was like a terrier dog a terrier dog which um you know takes hold of your foot pulls sinks his teeth in and just does not let go 
<laughs> he fought them for i think something like 15 or 20 years oh man and uh, you know overcame them up to the point where they had to they had to appoint him as the captain of the indian team for the commonwealth games in auckland which incidentally i attended as a journalist i i tell you this because this coterie of three people from the bai uh, i don't want to name them here because there could be legal repercussions but everybody knows who they were and they ruined the careers of several several upcoming players i might have been one of them i'm not sure that i was the same caliber or standard of sanjay sharma and prakash padukone but i had hopes that i could play for india then i ended up playing for india as a veteran and with a greater success but at that time i know this coterie of three really really bothered sanjay uh slapped him with any number of uh, uh lawsuits made it extremely difficult for him to to function uh banned him tried to ban him rather which he got reversed in the courts they did the same thing to me i as a journalist had written in 1984 about a tournament in gorakhpur where they had behaved very badly with some of the top indian players and uh, the headline of that was bai back to its old horrid ways and it had appeared in a magazine called sports week and this uh, this gentleman from jabalpur this gentleman from jabalpur slapped a defamation notice on me in three places in jabalpur in gorakhpur and in hyderabad unka kya kehna tha isko khichenge jab ye 10 bar isko aana padega tab iski akal thikane aa jayegi and that obviously was the ploy that they used even against sanjay fortunately he had a good uh, lawyer friend who took up cudgels on his behalf but this filing of cases against criminal defamation cases which are actually uh, non bailable in three remote corners of india i mean gorakhpur hyderabad and jabalpur meant that you know i would have been really gasitoed i chose to go to the court and apologize and have the judge close the matter but sanjay stayed on fought and beat them every time and for that barkudar i pay homage to you boss you are the greatest <laughs> here that uh, i have written huge number of articles i think almost around 1500 1500 articles all over india and all over and uh, some uh, places abroad and it is because of shrish narkarni because i love this style i love this this thing so he is my guru as far as the writing is concerned final sentence yes please at the moment sanjay is going through a really really bad time on the health front and it is up to all of us to support him uh, you know mentally to the maximum extent possible but i know that the way he has fought back i have taken a lot of inspiration from him i have had 27 surgeries to every part of my body except the space between my two ears which the doctor said was uh, you know they couldn't do anything about <laughs> including two heart attacks and i have still been playing badminton been playing badminton for the country and been playing at at the highest international level a lot of that is due to the the uh, inspiration that i derived from my friend sanjay that is wonderful we are all here with um, uh, you mr sanjay it is as 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 much as we can as emotional support as mental support um we're here we we are all praying for you we're all going to be praying for your health we will pray uh, for your family as well and i'm 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 really hoping that you see many more years of good health and you continue to inspire hundreds of young uh, sports people and hundreds of young children and uh, youths like us to keep going and uh, for me i can definitely say you've made an impact um, on the way i look at life is what sanjay said about children these days very true uh, luckily for me my son is a sportsman he's an international badminton player too and my niece who used to train under sanjay sharma for some time is an a current junior national champion so i mean i we as a family are very very sports oriented and like sanjay said like i would like to add the children need to be talented and the parents need to be mad 
to follow the sport you know Work i mean you way. have to spend half a year traveling with them till till they are 15 you have to travel everywhere with them once like for example my son shlok when he was in the 10th standard of the day he finished his 10th standard he went to prakash padukone academy so after that i have never gone for his tournaments unless it is to watch from far never as a parent so till then till 15 it is it is up to the parent to do everything so and sports people i mean strength is personified like look at uh, sirish like 27 operations and still playing i mean he's been told by umpteen number of surgeons that he should not be playing but that madman still plays it's totally <laughs> mad by the way <laughs> and uh, in a good sense so that is how it is so i mean sanjay again sanjay will overcome whatever problems he has right now it's just a bad face because he's, in the end he's a sportsman and sportsmen are terribly tenacious and he'll he will overcome everything that's all i have to say thank you very much kachish it was a pleasure I thank hope, you so much uh, you went, uh, yeah can you I enjoyed add, can, I add something? can i say, say something to manoj yeah yes Mr. sanjay please Manoj, you know, the, the first person who saw something was wrong with me regarding my Parkinson was your niece and my student, Simran Singhji. After about two hours of, uh, you know, multiple tosses and uh, smash practice against her, with her, I want, wanted to fill up a checkbook and my handwriting was going wayward. So she told me, sir, your hand is shaking and you're not able to write properly. I said, no, no, I'm tired because of that. So that was the first person. She noticed that something was wrong. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Manoj, did you know about that? Sorry? Who? Who? Mr. Manoj, did you know about that? No, no, I didn't. But then children are... I mean, they have the eyes of God here. I mean, they can see through anything. It's lovely and that, that time, uh, you shared that, that incident. That time, was what, 14 years old or something? 13 or 14? Right. He's 19. All right, so Rohan asks, uh, what is your favorite mantra that made you keep going? Do you have a mantra that kept you, kept you going? As long, as long as you enjoy something, you'll keep on going. The fights right. with the association and this and that, I just took it in my stride. Because I used to love the game so much and representing India was always a dream which I fulfilled for a long, long time. So. Uh, it just keeps uh, it keeps you going, you know, because you enjoy it so much. Right. Uh, the passion and the love triumphs over any sort of hate, any sort of uh, barriers that are put ahead of you. I hope that answered your question, Rohan. Suruchi Pillai. I hope I pronounced your name right. Suruchi, right? Yes, you did. Hi. All right. What's your question? Hello. Okay. First of all, good evening, Sanjay, sir. I'm good really evening. honored. Yes, sir. I'm really honored to like have a conversation with you. And my question is, since when you are knowing that you're going through something that is not letting you, you know, play your favorite game, your favorite sport that you love so much, how did you keep your hopes up? Because after some time, people lose hopes. So how did you keep that hope with you? I will still play. I will get better again. Thank you for that question. Yes, yes, Mr. Sanjay. You, you don't uh, accept defeat. That is the way I look at it. It is some obstacle that has come my way. I have to either go around it or jump over it, but I must cross it and clear it. Uh, it is important to have that sort of feeling. If I was defeatist or negative, I would never have come to this level, either in my life or in my game. So don't take no for an answer. Just try to get out of problems that you're facing and you'll become a better person. When you want to achieve something, don't take no for an answer. That is a wonderful message. Thank you so much. Uh, Suruchi, I hope that answered your question. I yes. see Sindhuja next. Sindhuja, uh, yeah, please Sindhuja. ask your question. Hi. Uh, so I want to know at what point you realized you wanted to tell your story? Uh, the book, I mean. So, a uh, question, uh, if I can repeat the question for you, uh, Mr. Sanjay, she wants to know, when did you feel like now is when you want to share the story? When did you feel like uh, I want to write a book about it now? Actually, 
Uh, I think this uh, thought came to me when I was in hospital doing nothing, just staring at the uh, ceilings and uh, walls and here and there, waiting for the next uh, injection to take place. So I was wondering about it, you know, why not uh, channelize my whatever energy I had that time and start writing something about it. And uh, I talked to a couple of people and they said, you've got a very strong story. You must be the, first of all, you must be the only international player of any sport in India who got banned three times. You won three court cases against your association. You never gave up. So I found these things interesting and also how to overcome the physical challenges that I'm meeting now. So then I put pen to paper and started writing and then I started enjoying it. I was revisiting and relearning from my childhood. And uh, I think that gave me a lot of happiness. And finally, we have a lovely uh, publishing company like Ink Feathers that came forward and said, we will have a book and we will uh, give your story to the world. And that, that's the way it was. So, uh, in fact, I have two, three other stories also which they're interested in. So let's see how it goes. And uh, nothing else to do. Gave me the time and gave me the energy to put uh, my thoughts on paper and slowly a book emerged which uh, I hope that you all find interesting to read and learn something and your children especially should learn something uh, from my career. I can assure you that that is the best decision you've ever made because without that we would never have uh, to read such a story to uh, witness such a journey. So many sports people, so many personalities, so many hardworking, uh, struggled people uh, their stories have faded with time. Their stories are forgotten. Their stories, which could be could have been an inspiration, could have been a motivation to so many, have faded with time. And I'm really, truly glad that you chose to write this book and to publish a Match Point. Where you can find the book. The book is available on Amazon. You can order it. It's just launched today and uh, to celebrate his many more years of his health and his success and continue to inspire many people, you should definitely get a copy of the book. It is available on the Amazon bookstore and the Ink Feathers bookstore. You can find it. You can quickly order yourself a copy. You will not regret this read. Feel free to gift this ahead to any sports young aspiring kid in your family who you think it may help, gift it to any of the parents that you know who has a kid who wants to be a sports person. Share this ahead to people who you think can inspire, be inspired by this book. You will not regret this read. It has been truly an inspirational read. There are many, many incidents, funny incidents, struggle, struggle uh, filled with uh, struggle as well as happiness, as well as smiles and sadness. The whole book is a package of um, uh, an amazing read. You should definitely check it out. I would encourage you to go place an order today. Thank you so much for being a lovely audience, an energetic audience, an uh, interactive audience. Thank you so much to all our guests here, um, Mr. Nath Karni, who took his time, Mr. Manoj Vaz, who was here with us, um, sharing all these memories with us. The session would not have been the same without you. Thank you so much uh, to Mr. Sanjay and his daughter as well for taking the time, participating. Thank you so much for being next to him and helping him through the session. It is, it is really heartwarming to see how lovely of a family you are and uh, such an inspiration. All of you are such an inspiration to us.